Oh, I've got a lead. There you go. There we go. Can you drop this off the lead? Hi, my name is Burke and I'm from Jim's Laundry Services National Office. Today, we'll be going out on the road with a few of our franchisees to see what their experiences are like. The first franchisee we'll be following around today is Zach. Zach, do you mind coming through? Yeah, no worries. G'day. Do you mind introducing yourself, please, for us today? My name is Zach Kalafis. I look after the territory of Pascoval Central, um, close to the headquarters for Jim's Laundry. And um, let's go do this and have some fun today. If I stole the car for you, don't, don't laugh at me. No. Oh, hello. I think always Jim's. I've been with Jim since June last year. It's definitely uh, interesting being in the laundry world because it's a new division as well. Yeah, yeah. Of course. So it was a lot to take on at the start, you yeah. know what I mean, and get used to. Yeah. But it's good. I came from like a telco industry. So I was oh, okay. working in an office for 24 years. Um, so for, for myself, it was pretty much I needed a bit of a, a lifestyle change. Yeah. And something that where I can actually like. Like today is an example, I've got to get pick up my daughter at 3.30. Okay. Uh, or 3 o'clock. Or, you've got to get the time right, otherwise that'll be a problem. So for me, it was like, well, I need, need a bit of a change, a um, bit of flexibility, yeah. which normally, you know, you had that within, you know, working at some jobs and everything else. But, yeah. you know, if they wanted me to fly to Sydney, as an example, I would yeah. have to get up and go to Sydney for right. two, three days, you know, every month. And, Sometimes it's a bit hard. Like you, just, you don't want to go to Sydney. Yeah. Um, and, you know, and I've always kind of been a guy that's like, oh, I want to try something new, yeah. something different. I've got another business as well, okay. but, which isn't gyms, um, that I always had as a bit of a, a side little gig. Yeah. And then I decided that when the time came, you know, can I do everything? And I'm like, no. Well, I wanted to do something different because I also have my mum helping me. She does all the ironing for me. Oh, okay. <laughs> They provide ironing as well. So that's how it all came about. She wanted me to, she was like, oh, can you, have you ever got any work for some laundry or something or ironing? I was like, you know what, I've got an idea. How about we look at some laundry stuff? Yeah. I'll get involved in um, the laundry and you can do all the side of the of the ironing and occasionally when I need some help, she comes and helps me as well. Yeah. Um, this is my barber, yeah, believe so, it or not. Yeah. So yeah. this is my barber. Yeah. And okay. he was one of my first commercial clients. When I told him I was going to do this, Yeah. He was just like, no, no worries, I'll support you. Um, and we support each other. So I come to him for, him for haircuts. Okay. And he gives me his uh, towels that need to, do, to occur and, and get washed. So. Right. How are you? Good, good. I'm just here to pick up the towels. Thank you. Oh, beautiful, you've got the bag ready for me. I'll leave you another bag. Okay. One bag. That's it. Just one bag, yeah? Just one bag. Done. All right, buddy, I'll take care of it, right? Thank you. This is a bag just so we can identify who the, whose laundry is whose. And what I usually do is I just put a tag on it. So if they've got two or three, I've got stickers that I can put on as well. And I just tag it. So that way when I'm actually doing the laundry, I know whose stuff it is so I can return it correctly. Yeah, well, I, I live in the area. I've been in the area for 40 plus years. I literally grew up in the street down the road. And, I, and uh, the first house I lived in was actually on the main road down here. So I've pretty much been here for 40 plus years. I'm only, I'm actually 21 years, I'm only, I'm really young. Um, so the story with the, the barber that I've, that I've got here, he's actually, is my barber as well. And when I told him I was gonna get involved in, in laundry and so forth, and I said, look, if you ever need someone to come and do your, your towels, whatever it may be, I'm here to help you. And he's like, no worries. So he supports me, I support him, and that's how it is, right? I'm part of the local community. 
and therefore we support each other. So as I said, I grew up in the area. I drink more coffee from the same from the same shop pretty much every day, um, and that's it. <laughs> um, main reason was I was telling I was saying earlier that for flexibility is one. Um, also, I probably one of the main things actually, but also getting a brand behind me that can actually support me. I don't have to worry about where am I going to get my next lead from. It's all done. Part of the marketing, right? As a business owner, you got to worry about doing the job. Um, doing your admin work, doing socials, doing marketing, trying to, as I said, lead generation. By the time you get home for the day, you, you pretty much put on about 17 hats just to get your job done. But with gyms, what I found was that I could just go there, turn on my leads, or then all of a sudden the leads start coming in. And honestly, I've probably built 80% of my business based off the leads, and I'm happy with that. Like there's only a certain amount of leads that I need and a certain amount of income that I need to come in per month to, to pay for it or, you know, between your fees and, and your expenses that you've got. And I'm, I'm happy with that because of this is not the only thing that I do. And I've got another project that I have as well that I, that I work on constantly. I've decided I split up the two. And after being, you know, in telco for 24 years and living, working in an office, it was a perfect move for me. I'm out and about every day. You know, some people are like, oh, do you like, enjoy what you do? I absolutely love what I do now because I can actually get in my car, my little, this is called Tuk Tuk. This is the nickname of, of, the, of the van. And I just get in my car and I do what I want. Grab my coffee, stop at my local coffee shop, work on my, on my schedule. Um, and some days what I do is I book up two or three days fully. And that means it's my, it's my laundry days. And the other days it leaves me free to do other stuff that I like doing. I work my own hours. Uh, which is good, you know, I don't work Saturday and Sunday, that's just something I just don't do, but um, but for the laundry, as I said, it can be five days a week, it can be three days a week, it can be two days a week, it depends on what how I feel for the week or what, how much is, is going on and how much we need to push, but I've scheduled things in to be able to allow me to do other things in my life, so that way I've got that flexibility where, you know, working for someone else, as an example, in an office, if they needed me to fly to Sydney, I would have to pack up, fly to Sydney, um, no questions asked and I had to, had to do what I needed to do. But this way, no one tells me what to do. I, I pretty much do my own thing. And how has the support been from your regional franchise or how have you found that? Absolutely terrible. No, I'm just <laughs> No, it's been great. Um, they, if I need them, I, I jump on the phone and they're available for me. Sometimes I call them back, they call me back and I don't call them back because it's like, well, it wasn't really that, wasn't really important what I needed to ask. It can always wait when I next time I see them. I, I found, I, I get regular phone calls um, to see how things are going, is there anything I need? If I need products, if I'm running short on something, if I need advice, they're always there to help me out. So I have to admit that Jim's has been really good. Um, French has always been fantastic, you know, um, and I'm, I'm happy with the system and the way it is. Everyone, this is Jacopo from Broski Barber Studio. Hello guys, nice to meet you. Uh, he's my barber, so if I'm looking sharp today, it's because of him, but I need to still book in for a haircut. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, as I was saying earlier, I, I, I'm local to the community here. I live around the corner. When he first opened up his shop, I was kind of looking through the window to see what was going on. Found that he opened and I came here and I haven't left. Um, and this is Jakubo. Hello guys, nice to meet you. I'm the owner of Broski Barber Studio. I know Zach uh, now over a year. Um, he's a great businessman, hard worker man. And um, yeah, he's... Um, it's very good to support the local business. We support each other, he support me from day one. So I try to do the same with him. Uh, it's a part of community, Pascavel community. is good to have people, they support each other. And uh, yeah, I know that he's gonna smash this business. And uh, he honestly offer an uh, incredible, incredible uh, service to the community. Cause as uh, many people know, as a small business owner, you try to maximize your time. So the fact that he can pick it up, uh, everything from you, you can do the job, you can drop it off. Uh, it's definitely a beautiful service he offers. So I'm very happy with the service that he provides. I appreciate that, man. No, anytime. <laughs> it's good. It's so true. How long have you been uh, servicing your business prospect? Pretty much from when I started. I started yeah. in June, July last year. Yeah, something like that. Around there. Yeah, sure. um, he was actually my, one of my first uh, clients. Um, you know, when I told him I was going to go ahead and start this laundry business and I told him what I was doing, he's like, you guys, when you're ready, come and see me, and you guys, you can start washing all, all my towels and everything else, because I think he was over it. Yeah, exactly very, right. Yeah. Very, <laughs> very <laughs> does me. enough as it is, and so he kind of freed up a bit of his time, and I've taken that part over for him, so that way he can actually do what he does, which is give people great, you know, haircuts and make him looking really sharp, 
and then I can go away and get everything sorted for him on the back end so he doesn't have to worry about it. We pretty much go fortnightly. Yeah, fortnightly. Depending on, as it gets busier, it will move to a, to a weekly. Yeah. Um, what we do is when we first came here, I'll provide him with a bag, a stand, the whole lot. Yeah. That way he, it's easy for him. Um, he throws all his stuff in it and then I come and pick it up every fortnight. Exactly. Pick it up, get it all washed up and then just return it to him. It's actually very beautiful the fact that sometimes if I need it a little bit before than the fortnightly, I can just be in contact with him straight away say yeah, I can come and you know uh, bring it or take the stuff at this day, at this time and always on time, always perfect, so it's beautiful. Yeah. My next step now, I've got to, uh, I've got to go to a different location to drop off some the other bag that's on sitting on the other side and, and the ironing and then from there once I finish that because my run today the way I do things is I have certain days where I'm a lot busier than others to just for the flexibility for my, for my lifestyle um, but today what I'm going to do is I'm going to go drop everything off and then head to the laundromat get the the towels that we just picked up today get them all washed up get them ready for for broski and then then come back and drop them off to him oh I've got a lead how long ago was it? Six minutes. I better make a phone call. I'd like to give him a call within 10 to 15 minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hello, Ryan. It's Zach calling from Jim's Laundry Services. How are you? I'm well, thank you. I'm well. So I just had a message to give you a call in relation to your laundry. Um, what do you, when do you actually need this done? Okay. And what, what, you, what is it exactly that you need to wash? Is it bedding or is it clothing or? Oh. Okay. Is there any ironing as well that you need done? Okay, tomorrow, what day is tomorrow? Tomorrow's Friday and usually we, we can drop it off back on Monday. Would that be okay? Okay, fantastic. So what I'll do later on, once I get off this call, I'll send you a text message just to confirm. Um, I'll take a look at my schedule later on today, and then what I'll do is I'll, I'll send you a text message and just let you know um, when we can be out there to pick it up. Now, I'm guessing you've been on the website and just seen all the pricing and everything else? Yeah. Okay, fantastic. All right, so what I'll do is I'll send you a message just to confirm everything later, um, give you a time, and then if you just confirm, then we can go ahead and um, organize it. Done. All right, thank you very much, Ryan, for your time. Okay, bye. The, no, so the client actually lives at a, an apartment block. Yeah. Well, an apartment. It's an apartment, sorry. So I usually pick him up. So I picked him up yesterday morning. I have a, a schedule I pick up on. And, and then what I usually do when I return the clothes, I just leave it at reception for him because that's how we've worked it out. So he doesn't actually have to be there. Yeah. So I usually go in there, take his uh, ironing, I take his, his laundry, yeah. and then leave it with the reception, and then the reception will hand it off to him. I just let him know that the, the ironing and uh, laundry is there. He's been, he was actually one of my first uh, leads, believe it or not, when he came through, and ever since June, and he stayed with us ever since. So he's been, he's been loyal, um, he's been happy with our service, we've, um, we, you know, and so we always make sure we're, we look after him. He was originally in the city, and then he actually moved to this next location, and he actually asked me, he said, can you continue doing the service because I'm moving? And I'm like, I looked at it, it was within 5Ks of where I, I was, so I continued the service with him. And um, yeah, it's been like that every week. Every week, I don't even send him a reminder text message, he kind of just knows that I'm turning up. Um, I usually just send him a text message once I've dropped everything off, so he knows there's a but the front there's desk. Like weekly, you know, it's a weekly client every Wednesday pickup and every Thursday doesn't matter what time I drop it off so I usually put it into my schedule of what I've got on for the day um, and then I what I'll do is I'll go and I'll I'll drop it off to him how many watches do you do you normally take a day it varies it varies on the, on the clients right so because we we have different clients so some clients you might come in you might get a bag and it might have three loads worth um, and you know, if you've got two clients a day, you end up with six or seven a day. But I've also got, then you end up with your, your once-off clients. Sometimes we've had up to about 10 loads in one wash for a client. What usually might have happened is they've gone in there, they've gone, um, they've either moved or something's occurred or they've gone away and they're like, you know what, I need to get all my clothes washed. And that occurs. We've also had clients that have bought a new home Right, so they bought all this brand new bedding, everything, the whole lot, and they've looked at the loads and they're like, "We can't do all this." 
So what they've done is they've outsourced it, right? They outsourced it to us. So they, they contacted us. Um, the lead came through, through through gyms. I picked it up, went out there, got it all washed um, for them, got it all folded, the whole lot. Had some ironing stuff that needed to occur, which um, I got I got organised. And then what I did is I went and dropped it off. And then they were able to move into the new home with the new um, fresh laundry about it. So with my business, I've kind of, well, I have domestic clients. I've got commercial clients as well. Um, but I also offer like a tea towel hire service for cafes and restaurants. Okay. So that is part of my, one of my, an extra service that I've added onto uh, onto gyms. Now, when I first took that on, I was like, oh, hang on, let me just check everything, make sure my insurance covers it, and it's all covered. So what we do is we actually provide the, the tea towels to them, the polishing cloths, microfibers, and that's part, another part of my business. Now, it's not for everyone, um, but it, it, work, it works for, for me um, and my business, and so that way I have a bit of a variety because I like having a variety in my life. <laughs> yeah. Look, it's, it's sometimes it's, you know, it can be a little bit busy when you've got a lot of things happening at, at, at once between organising pickups and and then washing and then looking at timing and so forth. So that's why I like to schedule whatever I can. And as you probably might have earlier on, I had a lead before uh, that came through. I don't do any drop-offs on Saturday and Sundays unless it's really urgent. What we like to do is I like to pick up on a on a Friday and we return on on the Monday. You know, it's about that work-life balance as well, right? Sure. I've always, also mentioned that to the clients, so if they're fine with that. Correct. So yeah. I ask them, and they're they're okay with it. Yeah. And then what? Uh, and then after that, I just, as I said, I pick up, I drop off. Um, as long as they're happy and they've got the approval, we're good. Yeah. So before when I had that call, later on when we stop again, I'll be looking at my schedule. Um, I'll drop him a text message just to remind him that I'm going to have a conversation. Um, yeah and so forth, and let him know what time I can actually pop in there and, and, and pick it up from them. Oh, gym's antennas. Yeah. Occasionally when I see a gym's van or something, I'll kind of give them away over a two. Yeah. The gym's antennas, you see them everywhere, that's what I'm saying. You see gym's vans everywhere. So how, how do you know about gym's right? What gym's van? Or someone came up, came up to you? So gym's laundry, yeah. I found it when I was driving on the freeway. So I was driving on the freeway, heading to the airport on one of my mornings that I needed to, to fly off to Sydney for, for work. And I look to my right and what do I see? Jim's laundry services. I'm like, what? Is what it, is this? Is it, uh, it was a massive billboard. Oh, billboard. It was a massive okay. billboard and that's how I found it. And I was like, really? They got into laundry? I'm like, let me look into this a little bit further. I've always had this fascination with laundry mats for some reason. Everyone's like, what do you mean? I'm like, one day I'm going to own a laundry mat. That's my next goal. Um, and I thought, instead of having a massive investment and in getting involved in it, well, having seen the, the gym's laundry sign, and I was like, oh, maybe I can do this remotely. This can be something that... So I started looking into a little bit further, found the gym's brand, found that they had a laundromat, made an inquiry with Bill, and then started the, the conversations with him. Looked at it at the start, kind of let it go for a bit, and I was like, oh, maybe is this something I can do on my own? Looked into that, and I was like, have I really got the time and the marketing and uh, to go away and actually rebuild a, a brand new brand? Or can I go with a bigger brand that can actually support me and, and take care of it? So that's what I did. And that's why I ended up at Jim's Laundry. Or if we get into an apartment block that's in my area, I'll grab some of my brushes and I'll just put them all in the litter boxes. Yeah, so, so for apartment house, do you manage? Because for household, you can just go up to the door and pick up it. Correct. Or, yeah. So with apartment blocks, what I usually do is I set an, a, a, an appointment time. Yeah. I usually give a, a rough time between, like, you know, an example, 8 to, to 9 or 8 to 8.30. Uh -huh. I don't like to be late. So <laughs> if I am running late or something for some reason, or, you know, if there's traffic or whatever it may be, I, I make sure I, I message to let them know. But I usually set a time with them. And then what we do out of the basis of the time, I'll, I'll turn up. They'll either bring the items down to me and I'll, I'll pick it up and, and then take it away. Um, but for this client that I have now, what we do is, um, as I was probably saying earlier, that we, on, on one day I, I pick it up, like today, and then right now I'll drop it off at reception. Uh, and, and the main reception just accepts the, the clothing for me and they yeah. put it away and, let, and then they let the client know. Okay. That's how I do it. Uh, okay. But for a lot of the clients, it, 
but this is just this one because I've been going every week, right? But if it's one off or whatever it may be, I just set a time with them. Sometimes it could be in the afternoon, um, sometimes they're at work, and then... So people, so people like me, I yep. work 9 to 5, and yep. I live in a car, but because I, I hate to be that much. Yeah, so <laughs> okay. Well, oh, here's, here's my card, if you <laughs> yeah. want, you can call me. Yeah, all right. <laughs> if you don't mind, come to the box yard. I'll come to the box yard if you need me to. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so. I'll be there. Be I like I'm an I'm an early starter. So okay. for me, I sometimes I do pickups and drop offs at seven o'clock in the morning. Okay. Um, I like to get up and get out and about. Like I usually get up at about four thirty five o'clock. Right. That's that's my routine. Get up in the morning, go to the gym. Even though I've been a bit slack lately. Go to the gym, have some breakfast. I like to set my day before I, I, I head out. I'll get, jump in my car. It's quiet on the street. Um, I'll go do all my pickups. Yeah. And then I'll go back and then, then get everything organized and, and washed up. So you normally start very early? I start early. From 7 o'clock and onwards, I start doing my pickups. Ah, okay. Uh, with what my... time do you finish them? Like, oh, it, depends on, it depends on the day. It depends on when, when I need to return everything. Okay. Sometimes if I don't have to get everything back the, the, the next day, because that's what I've organized with the client or like some of my commercial stuff, where I supply details, I don't have to get that back for a week. So, but that's a different process all, all together, um, where you have to soak things and everything else. It's not just a, a standard laundry mat kind of situation. So certain things I do are laundry mats, and certain things because of like the tea towels and everything else, because uh, they need to be soaked. I can't really leave them at a laundromat, so they all get soaked because you know from the food and everything else, and I, I let that kind of sit overnight. Um, with the, the products that we use, I use a lot of the the gym's products that we've got. So while well, the the brand that the, the that I started uh, first using, so they're called Dominant, and we found that they're they're really the commercial products. I think they've been over been around for over twenty five years or something. And I use all their products, yeah. and what I do is I just I use that. Um, and believe it or not, I rang them up once because I when I started looking at the teeth, I was like, I can't get some of these stains out, and. They were really helpful. They were able to help me out with the process on what needed to occur, what product I should try. Yeah. Um, and so I kind of buy everything in bulk with them yeah. and, and I use their products. So, but going back onto my day, sometimes it starts early in the morning yeah. and then, you know, stuff gets done during the day, then it gives me a bit of free time. And I can go yeah. home, I can do some admin work or I can go do my other job that I've got as well, my other, other project that I work on, my other business that I work on. And what I do is, you know, depending on the client, I might drop something off at five o'clock. Oh, sure. I've got something that's around the corner from my house, so I just drop it off at five when they're home. I like to drop it off when they're closer to when they're home, so that way I, I know it's not sitting outside all day. Right. right. So that's how I kind of do it. What well, about, like, is there a lot of this kind of thing? There is. Oh, there are other businesses out there. Yeah. Before, well, I was saying. So with Jim's Laundry, there's also, there was another business, I'm not going to mention their names, because um, I don't want to give them any more promotion. Uh, let's just put it there. On. Very similar. And I made an inquiry with them, because I wanted to see, right? Are they franchisee? They are franchisee, yes, they are. They were on Shark Tank, if they'll give you a hint, hint. Uh, but the big difference between them and us, because, well, you know, I am Jim's Laundry now, is they wanted 20% of your profit. Uh, yeah. Where Jim's model doesn't work like that. Yeah. You pay, you pay yeah. a flat fee, right? And I know, and I, I see, watch all the videos that I've watched. Everyone asks the same question. Yeah. Oh, they, they take all your money. No, they do not take all your money. They, they, with like any business, there's a CPI increase on, on, yeah. on everything, on every year. You pay for what, what leads you get. If you turn your leads off, you don't pay for your leads. You pay your, your flat fee every month, um, a set fee. If I'm making $100,000 a year or I'm making $350,000 a year, my fees are exactly the same every single month. With the fact that the only difference is, is if depending on how many leads I take. The less leads I get, the less I, it gets added on onto my monthly fee. The more leads I end up taking, which means two things. You're either uh, getting a lot more leads, therefore you're getting a lot more business, and you only pay for, for the lead once. You don't pay for it two or three times. And they don't take anything else from it. It's, it's that simple. It's, and that's what was one of the appealing um, things that came to me. I was like, well, if I'm gonna work 
and I'm going to make, as I said, $100,000 a year. I'm just using that as a number. Why should I give 20% 20, 20 away to someone else? And if I make $200,000, I'm going to end up giving another 20%, so that's $40,000 a year, when I can just pay one set fee per year that I'm happy with, which is comfortable. And I think it works out to roughly about maybe 6 or 6%. 68% depending on you know on what you're doing for, for the year um, or not say on a hundred thousand um, compared to paying a lot more I'm not gonna give my hundred and money away to to another brand yes sure okay the fee might be a little bit less but also you you have to use their products on all of this stuff oh, so you're, yeah. you're buying from what I, from what I remember you, you buy their products and everything else Jim's doesn't force you to use their products yeah yeah, I've chosen to use this because it's a recommended partner and I've tried the products out and I'm happy with it. Um, but I can go use, I can go source my own. Um, no one has told me what I can and can't do. And that's what I enjoy the most about it. Partnering up with someone that has a, a brand recognition and doing it out on your own as an independent is completely different. Um, independent, it's really hard because you're working for it. You're gonna become a brand, you're becoming loyal, you gotta work on your socials. Where with gyms, they, they're doing all the back end for you. Like, look at us right now. You, they've got a team that's coming out and doing a day in a life where I would have to go do that. Yeah. You know what I mean? And now it works for me where I can use these snippets for my own profile page later on down the track. And then it pushes the laundry. And the more vans we have on the road, the more our business expands. And then, therefore, it becomes recognition. Um, like, money wise, it's good enough to be a full time job or if you just want to. I think I, I think it's a it's a good side business. Yeah. Um, depending on, on what lifestyle you want to live, right, and how much you want to put into it. Now, I've chosen to put in the many hours that I have because I have other things that I do as well. But if someone dedicated themselves, I think five to six days a week, and all they focused in on was an all-in on laundry with the support of Jim's brand behind you. I think you can make a good full-time wage out of it. Um, it's more than enough to be able to, to do it. But then again, if you also want to make it to be a part-time thing, which I am running as a, as a part-time because of the, the amount of hours and everything else, um, there's also good money in it as well, I, I think personally. You know, take out your fees, take out your expenses. Once you work out that balance, um, you can actually get it up and running. But like, any business, right? Any business is hard. If you don't put the effort in, you're not going to get the return. Right. And that's how I look at it. Yeah, it's one of those kind of businesses. It's like whatever you put in, you can you can, you can get out. If you put in 100% dedicating nothing else, um, and open, always be open to not just going. I'm only going to focus in on domestic, but. Like for myself, as I said, I've got domestic, I've got you know stores that have got their own uh, linen that I go away and wash, or, and even recently, Jim's looked at dry cleaning as well at, oh, really? as a service. Correct. Okay. Correct, we're in South Melbourne to drop off now. I've got to drop off some shirts um, and some laundry that we've done for our client. Um, this is a client that we have on a, on a regular basis, and we've got a system in place that I just take it straight to their front reception area and just leave it with the concierge. Good morning. How are you? Yeah, thank you. I'll just drop him a text message too. Thanks all. So I've, I've, I've literally just dropped off the, the laundry. I'm also gonna, I've spoken to the concierge and they're gonna advise uh, the client. But what I also do as well is I also drop him a text message from just for myself, letting him know that I've dropped it off and it's at the reception ready for him. We're currently at the laundromat where we're going to do some washing of the, the towels that we picked up earlier from our barber. Um, so follow me as we go in and take care of it. So we're here today at uh, one of the laundromats that have partnered up with us. Um, Sean, who's one of our franchisees in Brunswick East, he was an independent laundromat owner prior to joining Jim's. And what he decided to join Jim's, Jim's Laundry Services to become a franchisee. Um, and at least this way, it was a form of lead generation for his business. So if you're an independent laundromat owner and you're interested in bringing in some clientele into your business, um, joining gyms is definitely an opportunity for yourself. 
not only that, we've got local franchisees in the area who use your services like Zach. Correct. Um, so it really does work well for, for individuals who already have the facilities um, because we partner up with them by giving them the brand name. So, Zach, how do you find using uh, Sean's Laundromat in terms of the work that you do? Oh, it's great. You know what I mean? Like you're supporting a, a local business. Um, you're supporting another franchisee that has an actual laundromat, which they you, know, you can bring your work into. It's trusted. You know, they, they, they get to know you. Yeah. Uh, but it's also laundromats you can use around your own area. If you can partner up with one of them and talk to them, it's a very good cash injection for them as well because mm. it's a win-win. You don't have to go out there and buy all your equipment. You know you put in an environment where it's purposely built just for laundry. Mm-hmm. You can come in here, there's a, there's a whole... You know, as, you, as you'll see in Sean's laundry here, mm-hmm. there's a whole set out, you know, with the tables for your folding area, you've yep. got your, your dryers, you've got your washers. And I, I personally think it's, it's a great opportunity for anyone that wants to get into the business to either talk to someone like Sean who's in the area yep. that can partner up with a, with a franchisee and do all your washing there. Yeah, definitely, definitely. I mean, just by looking inside, which we're going to take a do in a moment, um, you'll be able to see the facility itself. It's really one of the best laundromats I've seen in around this area. So come follow us on and we'll, we'll show you what inside this laundromat looks like. And a lot of times the reason I'm doing this is just in case there's anything in it, like a blade or something you just don't know about. Um, we do the same with, with clothing. The current, you know, if we check the pockets for, you know, lighters, how many times we found a lighter or a credit card or just little stuff that probably shouldn't be in it. So that's, that, so this is my process. So this is why I'm separating everything. If it was clothing, we would separate everything into lights, darks and colors and then take it from there. If it's bedding and, and sheets and everything else, we separate it again. So that's how we do all our loads. The next thing I'll do, I, I like to, when I open the machines, I like to spin them and just check that nothing has been stuck from, sometimes you get items that get stuck on, on the top or the, or the bottom uh, from washing because of the spin. So I always check everything before I put everything in or I also check for screws or blades or anything that might actually affect the clothing or any of the uh, other stuff that we, we're using. Um, the last thing you want to do is damage someone's items because you haven't done a, how long did that take? A 35 second check. So that's why I do it this way. Continue to throw everything in. The next thing I'll be doing after this is setting the, the machine, which I'll show you everyone and what I do to a setting to be washed. Now with these machines here, you don't want to be filling them all the way because if you don't, there won't be enough agitation um, for the items to actually be clean because if you overpack them to say to the top, it's not going to have any room to, to move around. So I always kind of get to at least halfway to three quarters to at least about there because then we'll end up having a good wash. Okay. This stuff's pretty strong. Hey Sean, how you going? This stuff's pretty strong, so you don't need to overdo it. Um, so what I'll do now is I'll be adding it in. Next thing to do is actually pay for it. All right, uh, the laundry has been done. Now we're gonna take it out and put it into the dryer. Always remember the spin because they can get stuck at the on the side and on the top. You just want to make sure you're never leaving any customers or clients' garments or items like towels. So if you take a look in here, I'll just show you a quick look. See how that's stuck up there? See how that's stuck? And that's the problem, right? Because if you leave that in there and you're a, a laundromat or whatever it may be, the next person's going to take your washing home and you're going to lose some items for your client and not going to be happy with you. So you're going to make sure you do the last spin, do the last check, close it off, and away you go. 
again, always check the machines before you put everything in. Again, because it could be blades, it could be from the last person, you don't want to damage anything. And you'll see with the spinning, they can come up pretty dry as it is, but this is just going to fit really nicely. Remember, as we said with the, with the actual washing as well, and in the dryer, you don't want to overload it because it needs, it needs space and heat to be able to dry your garments quickly and efficiently. Now, we're going to move that to medium temperature. I like to do low, but it's just me. It takes a little bit longer, um, but we can check that as we go along. All right, they're all dry now. Now it's time to take them out and get them folded up for our clients. I took the, the towels to the van. Tomorrow I'll be dropping it off at the agreed time that we normally have. 24 hours is what we've agreed on and I have one happy client. Thanks. <laughs>